So here's the setup for a standing wave on a string lab. So it's a, so it's a, uh, it has an elastic core. Uh, so one end is clamped, and uh, pretty close to the clamp, uh, you have a mechanical vibrator uh, whose frequency can be controlled, you know, with a frequency dialer right here. Uh, and the other end, uh, we put uh, a total of 700 mass, 700 gram of mass hanging, you know, uh, at one end. And uh, that mass puts some tension on the string. Okay. Uh, and the speed of the transverse wave on a string depends on that tension. So you can form a standing wave on this string uh, when uh, the frequency you dial matches its boundary condition. So boundary condition means uh, so since this this is a string, uh, you know, fixed at both ends. So both ends must be the position of no. So that's our boundary condition. In other words, when you slowly change the frequency, when its frequency matches uh, the integral multiple of its, one of its natural frequency, then you will see a resonance. Resonance means you will see, uh, you know, a, a different modes of uh, different modes of standing wave. So as you can see. So let's first find the first harmonic. It's called fundamental frequency or first harmonic. So that means you slowly change the frequency until you see a first harmonic map, I mean uh, the maximum vibration. Okay, let's see that. So I'm slowly changing the frequency. So at around 13 or 14, as you can see, right, and you can fine tune it, you see this first standing wave, the first possible standing wave. So that's why it is called uh, first harmonic. So now, uh, once you find the first harmonic, so the, as you know from theory, right, you can predict what would be the next harmonics. Right? So the next would be the, just the integral uh, whole number multiple of the fundamental frequency of one. So let's find the next one. So this is the first fundamental frequency uh, is at uh, about 13.8 uh, or 14 hertz. So now let's go to the next higher mode. So as you can see, this is this must be the second harmonic. Okay. That's the next possible frequency with which you can resonate the string. Uh, so that, that's why it is called second harmonic. So say, remember, second harmonic has two antinodes. This maximum vibration is called antinode. So two antinode, three nodes. One node here, one node here, one node somewhere here. So let's go to higher mode. So this must be the third harmonic, and third harmonic occurs at a frequency of 41.8 hertz. So note that down. Uh, so and third harmonic has three antinodes, one, two, three antinodes, and four nodes, right? and so on. So you can go to higher modes. So slowly fine tune it until you see the next harmonic. So this must be what should be the harmonic here. So one, two, three, four. So you have four antinodes. So that means it's, it's resonating at uh, fourth harmonic. Okay. So this is a fourth harmonic frequency, and the fourth harmonic frequency, major frequency is 56.2 hertz. So let's go to a couple more. So make sure the mass is not oscillating. Okay, I'm gonna go. So you have to fine tune it. There's a fine tuner here. So you have to fine tune the frequency until you see uh, the big vibration of the mass. So this is the fifth harmonic, as you can see. This is the fifth harmonic. 
So one, two, three, four, five. So five anti note. So that means fifth harmonic. Okay. So let's do. Let me do one more. So now. So this is now sixth harmonic because it has six antidote. And you can hear the, the sound from the vibrator because it's, it's within the audio range, you know, and so on. So that's it.